In this video, I want to work through a problem and show you what it looks like in order to solve a double absolute value inequality. And we'll graph it at the end. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, as in any of these absolute value equations or inequalities, is to isolate the absolute value expression. The problem is we have two of them, so I just need to choose one. Let's go ahead and isolate the first one, and we'll do so by adding 6 to both sides. So I have the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than or equal to x plus 6, and then minus our other absolute value expression. So what do we do when we solve any of these? Well, we take it and we break it up into two separate ones. So let's go ahead and do that. x minus 3 is less than or equal to, and then we have this right side here, or we have x minus 3, and then we switch the sign to do the negative side, so greater than or equal to, negative x minus 6 plus the absolute value, because we just changed that sign from a negative to a positive, okay? So let's go ahead and solve each one of these independently, and we'll go ahead and start with this first one. Well, once again, I see an absolute value expression, so let's do what we always do. Let's isolate that thing. So let's subtract x and subtract 6 from both sides. And it looks like those x's cancel, and I have negative 9 is less than or equal to negative absolute value of x plus 2. Of course, I can divide by a negative 1 to get rid of those negatives. It will do it over here as well, but it will also change the sign of the inequality from less than or equal to to greater than or equal to. And we could switch these two. If you like to see the absolute value expression on the left side, we could switch this around and say the absolute value of x plus 2 is less than or equal to 9. So we just switch everything around, and that's okay. So now we have this guy. Let's break him up into the two pieces. So x plus 2 is less than or equal to 9, or x plus 2 is greater than or equal to negative 9. So when we subtract 2 from all of our parts here, x is less than or equal to 7, here we have x is greater than or equal to negative 11. I'm going to circle those, and I'm just going to hold on to those for a second, and I'm going to come back to them here in a moment. So, back up here, let's go ahead and solve this one the same way. I notice I have an absolute value expression, so let's isolate them. We'll add x and add 6 to both sides. So, I'll have 2x plus 3 is greater than or equal to the absolute value of x plus 2. And once again, maybe you like to see those absolute value expressions on the left side, so we'll just switch everything around. And then we'll split it into two. So x plus 2 is less than or equal to 2x plus 3, or x plus 2 is greater than or equal to negative 2x minus 3. And now it's just a matter of solving. So negative x is less than or equal to 1, so x is greater than or equal to negative 1. We'll circle that guy. And also, bring that guy over, 3x is greater than or equal to negative 5. So x is greater than or equal to negative 5 thirds. Okie dokie. So we have four of these simple inequalities, and they're kind of stretched from over here to all the way over here. So I'm going to go ahead and write them together. x is less than or equal to 7. x is greater than or equal to negative 11 x is greater than or equal to negative 1, and x is greater than or equal to negative 5 thirds. Okay, so we have all four now. So let's go ahead and look at a graph of this. So in order to do that, I kind of need to plot all of these. So negative 11 is the smallest, negative 5 thirds is the next smallest, then negative 1, and then 7. Okay, so let's just tackle these one at a time. So less than or equal to 7. So that would be here and less than or equal to would be all the way going this way. So greater than or equal to negative 11. So here's negative 11, and here's greater than going all the way over here. So negative 1 is here, and it's greater than, so it's going over here, and negative 5 thirds is here, and greater than going over there. So where's the overlap? Well, it looks like all four of them are true right here between negative 1 and 7. So I could write this as a trichotomy and say negative 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 7, and there would be the solution. And if you want to graph this now, negative 1 to 7, we'll have our closed circles, 
and the solution set will be in between these two values. So here is what the graph of our solution looks like, and here's the trichotomy for it. And let's jump back up and I'll show you the original uh, double absolute value inequality was here.